All right, according to the New York Times, the Warriors are set to open the brand new Chase Center against the Clippers on October 24th. Is this KD less version of the Golden State Warriors splashy enough for the $1.4 billion arena? Malika. They better hope so. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I, I grew up in Oakland, and I remember, and it wasn't that long ago, I remember going to Oracle Arena and paying $20 to go get the really high nosebleed seats. And it was fun. It was loud. It was rocking. And that's what gave Oracle uh, the reputation that it, it got for one of the loudest, best arenas in the league. And now those fans have all been priced out. And then they're moving the team across for a longer commute. And so all of those people that were there when they weren't good before, they ain't coming back. They can't afford it. They live on the other side of the bridge. And so they have to hope that this team is splashy enough. It, it doesn't matter. And, and the reason it doesn't matter is this is a, uh, sources tell me they're going to make an additional $175 million in basketball related income because of this new construction. We are now living in an NBA that, at least until the playoffs, for six months, there the teams that sell the tickets and the fans that attend the games are under no impression that they're gonna watch one minute of the game. They're gonna hang out in the Lexus Lounge. They're gonna hang out in the Founders Club. Mm -hmm. There are bars in Atlanta, the gorgeous renovated arena there, where literally, is understanding, like, hey, we built this for millennials who don't really wanna watch the game, but wanna hang out. Right on a Friday night at the place in the city where something is happening. So like, we're kind of in the post splash era in the sense that it just doesn't even matter. They're going to make money either way. Um, it is no longer about servicing the fans with a great product on the court. It is about servicing the fans with a place to see and be seen, a place to come <laughs> and hang out in the microbrew yeah. or in the bar area. Right. Uh, you can have a view of the yeah. game, but no one's really watching. Perhaps a nightclub in the arena. Right. Yes. And, and so and there's plenty of those now. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It, it really doesn't, I mean, I, I don't mean to be, be flip about it, but it just doesn't matter. I mean, down the road it matters. I mean, they want to get a new local TV deal at some point, presumably, but it just doesn't, like, it doesn't have to be flashy because it's not about the product on the floor anymore, which is something that owners and actually and Adam Silver are kind of concerned about a little bit. KP, do they have enough, though, on the floor? Do you believe, like, because, well, you know, Clay is going to come back, right? Yeah. So. And they've still got Steph Curry. Let's right. remember that part of the reason that Kevin Durant isn't there yeah. is because of the fact that he could never win over fans in the Bay Area the right. way that Steph Curry could. Yeah, and look, they've got, I think it's a 764 win percentage with their big three of Draymond, Clay, and Steph. I, that's got to be flashy enough, right? Or splashy enough in this particular case. <laughs> Spot you enough. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's going to be how this ages, too. Just like like, like Kevin said, I think that, you know, I, I have a little bit of a skin in this game. But in terms of the, the long term, okay, so it, right now, they have, they just opened Warriors Way. They are putting everything around it. It's sort of the Bucks have done that with a, a whole facility they've built around the arena. We're seeing that pop up more and more. And how is that going to age? If those fans don't start showing up, you know, what, what's what's going to happen then? Speaking of aging, and I, look, Kevin Durant, I'm sure, is excited to go to Brooklyn. Uh, he's probably not going to play this season. He's going to be playing with his friends in Kyrie and DeAndre. But do you think there could be any FOMO, any fear of missing out of the new Chase Center and everything that could come with kind of the underdog warriors, Kevin? I mean, by and large, in my experience, New York City is an inoculation against FOMO. Like, if you're in New York, <laughs> you're good. you don't really think it's but like that Brooklyn New Yorker or... cover. Right. It doesn't even matter. It's like that New Yorker cover where, like, right. it's like the rest of the world and yeah. you're kind of in I mean, that's yep. that's generally, I think, that you go to New York so that you inoculate yourself from FOMO. Okay. And you have to remember every once in a while to leave New York because otherwise you think it's normal for, for cocktails to be $17 and <laughs> right. for gas prices to be astronomical. Yeah. And well, for San Francisco is similar in that vein. Yeah, sure. yeah, man. Yeah. You're, no discount. <laughs> There's yeah. gonna be no. There's gonna be no lease FOMO there. Yeah. They're all gonna be paying millions of dollars for a teeny tiny apartment. Yeah. I, I guess it works in either location to ask whether the grass is greener on the other side of the bridge. Right. Ah, there you go. I see what you but did um, there. Um, Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For highlights and analysis, check out the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, check out ESPN Plus.